So let me ask you this, and you know, I'm particularly, my heart's been heavy lately for everything that's going on in India and just how much sure. true just t- turmoil is going on there. Yeah. So, um, and we can get on to the subject of variants and if you don't stop it, even if you don't have symptoms, you could be patient zero that makes a new variant and suddenly it's, you know, COVID 2.0. Short of all of that stuff, when I have the most po- you know, common question is I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm in my 30s and 40s. I really don't think, I've had this exact phrase multiple times, I really think, and they'll use the word immune, my immune system is healthy enough and I'm young and healthy enough to be able to like, you know, just take my chances, which each their own. I, I, you know, obviously, especially with India and everything, I very much believe that if we can, it's not high risk, you should do the vaccine. But in those people that just really just had their gut feeling, don't feel good about it based on the facts that they know at this point and kind of their own education, which I love and respect when people educate themselves to, to make decisions. I mean, that's the way the world should be. But if they have all that data and they make that decision, could they feel like maybe this could be something to where if I test it, even if I'm 30 and healthy and I'm really a non-expressor, apparently based on your prospective data, it really puts me in a different bucket yeah. group more accurately than the fact that I'm young and healthy. Yeah. This is more correlated than my age and my health, correct? Yeah, so I do, um, great question. I think that that is the value of this test and this study, truthfully. So what this test, what the data has shown in this study is that this test can help predict duration and severity of symptoms. Meaning, yes, if you have a new you know, strain of this coronavirus or it mutates or you have some other new novel virus, this should stay true because it's part of your innate immunity. Right. And we've actually now studied it to other viruses, not just COVID. Um, Basically to validate what we expected. You got it. Because it's innate. It has nothing to do with memory. And so I would argue it actually is a good way to help stratify the order in which people could receive vaccination, especially in countries where resources are limited. Yes. So you have a inexpensive, widely available test that someone can take at their own home and know how much risk they really have. Meaning, right. And I'm not saying that they're safe, but I'm saying you have a lot of people who assume, oh, I'm 30, I'm healthy, I have a strong immune system. But you can't have a strong immune system unless it's innate. And if this were to say that you have no expression of this receptor, I would advise, you know, consider getting vaccinated right. or consider certainly protecting yourself, you know, wearing masks, washing your hands. Um, but you're advising that not because of theory. No, but because, because we've proven there's evidence data. Yeah. and that statistics, those statistics are good, I yeah. assume. Yeah. Like, you know, very strong yeah, correlations. So- My name is Dr. Sanjay Janeja at Doctorpedia. If you're finding this information valuable, click here for more content.